today we have a uh, case discussion on carcinoma penis. Dr. Shubham Kumar, who is a junior resident at Calcutta National Medical College, now at District Residency Program at MR Bangor Hospital, will present. And with us today is uh, Professor Shorab Kumar Ghosh. He is Professor of uh, Professor and Head of Surgical Oncology at Calcutta Medical College. We will moderate today. So Shubham, you can share your screen and start presenting. Next. Thank you. Good morning, sir. So I'm very sorry for mm. getting late. And, uh, yeah, carry on. Please start. Please start. Sir, uh, my case is a case of penile carcinoma. Uh, my patient, Mr. ABC, 62-year-old male, who is resident of Haldia, West Bengal, who is barbed by occupation, presented with chief, chief complaint of ulcer over tip of penis for seven months and inability to retract foreskin for two months and swelling in bilateral growing region for one year. History of present illness, uh, my patient was apparently well seven, seven months ago when he developed an ulcer over the tip of penis. It was insidious in onset, gradually progressive in nature and was, was initially small and progressed into a mass of almost 3 cm by 2 cm. It was painless in nature and was associated with occasional seropurulent discharge. He developed inability to retract his foreskin for last two months. Initially, it was, he was able to retract it partially, but subsequently, it progressed to complete inability. He also developed swelling in the bilateral inguinal descent for last month. It was painless of so insidious onset and gradually increased in size. There is no history of pain, fever, hematuria, burning maturation, or poor urinary stream. No history of whitish or reddish discoloration over his. In past history, no history of similar illness in past, no history of prior hospitalization or any surgery. Major surgery, no history, uh, he is known hypertensive on medication and no history of circumcision. Personal history, uh, known, he is known alcoholic and smoker for last for past 25 years. No history of unprotected sexual contact in recent past. Blood and bowel habits were normal and no known allergy. In family history, no history of similar illness in family. In treatment history, he took over-the-counter medications for his complaint, but it was not lived. Symptoms were not relapses. Sorry. In summary, Mr. ABC, 62 year old male, known hypertensive, alcoholic, and chronic smoker, presented with complaints of ulcer over tip of penis for last seven months, inability to retract foreskin for last two months, and bilateral minor swelling for past one month. The ulcer was in serious in onset, painless in nature, and was gradually progressive and was associated with occasional seropurulent discharge. He developed progressive inability to retract his foreskin over the last two months. In, since last month, he developed swelling in inguinal region, which was painless and gradually progressive. There is no history of fever, burning maturation, hematuria, or poor stream of poor urinary stream and unprotected sexual contact. No history of history of piston metastasis. Okay, so basically the main complaint is uh, one of the uh, ulcer on the yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. over the over the, the part of the penis. penis. Yes. So, the, what are the possible differential diagnosis that you think of when sir, a patient mm, comes, a person comes, a male comes with a penile? First, my first differential diagnosis is sir, carcinoma penis. Second diagnosis is uh, uh, sir, uh, hard, hard shanker. Sir, due to have you seen a shanker in last three years? Time? I have not seen shanker no, for last 10 15 years. So, but, I mean, the shankers can present sir, in the dermatology uh, OPD. They will go more likely to yes. the dermatology OPD. It's very rare now with the advent of antibiotics. The incidence is it, not it, very... it is less, but still, it will, we will keep it in the diagnosis, I think, sir. Then yes. what is? Sir, uh, verrucous ulcer, warts. Uh, veruc uh, viral warts, you mean to say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Viral warts. Okay, viral warts you can keep. Anything else? Anything, sir? Tuberculosis. Okay. Tubercular ulcer. Sir, my these are my different diagnoses. Any other okay. uh, lesion in the penis? There are some uh, pre-malignant lesions in the penis yes, which sir. can have such a uh, even ulcer or polyphatic growth. So erythroplakia or chronic balanitis. Uh, chronic balanophosphatitis. Chronic balanopositis, okay, maybe there can be an ulcer uh, or erosion at least. It, okay, fair go, go back to the history of the site. There are some points I like to mention. Uh, 
uh, you are saying that he developed an ulcer. Uh, it's not a correct term to use. He said he developed swelling in the groin. This is not developed. These, these terms should be patient noticed an ulcer. He noticed that there is swelling in both groin. So it's, it's not proper to say he developed an ulcer. He developed swelling. Okay, these are the things patient is noticing and telling you. Second is, he said that, uh, uh, go to the past history. He said, no, if you have similar illness in the past, as I told you earlier also, this line is applicable in diseases which are characterized by relapse and remission. Suppose patient has got an ulcer in the uh, penis. You cannot say the similar illness. At the moment, you are seeing he has got uh, suspected carcinoma penis. So it's unlikely he had carcinoma penis and that has disappeared. If you can say there is no history of any ulcer in the past. It's not similar in this. Now we are saying it's a possibility of carcinoma penis. So that carcinoma penis will not disappear spontaneously. Okay, and you said uh, he cannot retract the foreskin. Yes. So in the foreskin, he cannot retract it. The question of saying he has no issue of circumcision. If patient undergoes circumcision, the foreskin will not have been there. So don't mention these unnecessary points. Okay, otherwise uh, cover the history. So, when you come to an ulcer anywhere, and in this case, you have mentioned a few differential diagnoses. So, what, why, why do you keep carcinoma penis as your provisional diagnosis? That is what you said first. So sir, that is your provisional diagnosis. What are the features that you look for in the sir, first, first, in sir, history? Uh, along, according to history, sir, uh, it is uh, gradually progressive ulcer, and uh, it okay. is sir, no, there is no history of uh, sexual contact, on sexual contact as per okay. patient. Okay. And uh, there was no, also no history of tuberculosis. To, uh, okay. To, Anything else? And sir, uh, age of patient is towards the older Elderly. Side, okay. Okay. Female then? patient. And uh, after that, sir, I'll... I have, uh, How about pain? How about pain? How about sir, pain? Pain. This is painless, sir. Painless. So is that a feature in favor of uh, carcinoma Yes, sir, it is penis? in favor. Yeah. So is early favor. carcinoma penile ulcers are generally painless, which is why the patient probably seeks treatment a little less. In the advanced stages where it is involved the shaft, it is involving the scrotum, there is a lot of secondary infection, there may be pain. But early small penile ulcers of the glands or the prepuce, they are, unless there is superficial added, uh, super added melanopostitis, the ulcers are typically painless. So that is a point strongly in favor. Anything else yes. in the history? As per history, sir, uh, there is no history of... Uh, sir, this is... He has he mentioned that he has got bilateral joint swelling. Does it yes. point that it might be... It might, yes, sir. Uh, it was, uh, as per... As the disease progressed, sir, he developed... Uh, he, he he noticed swelling in bilateral groin, mm -hmm. which uh, which can be, sir, uh, in, in bilateral linguinal lymph nodes, which is... Uh, Again, a common associate, common association of yes. penile carcinoma, right? Anything, yes. else? Anything else? How about smoking? Is that a known risk? Yes, factor smoking is associated. Cancer? Smoking so is associated said, with he, penile he cancer. So elderly male smoker, smoker, painless swelling, long duration, which is gradually progressing, and later on he has developed a bilateral groin swelling, swelling, which as you rightly pointed out, uh, is not developed. Sorry, <laughs> he noticed bilateral groin swellings which uh, you said might be inguinal lymph nodes. So these are definitely, these will cause you to keep penile cancer as a first differential first diagnosis at the end of history. Let's go on to examination. Yes. Moving towards examination. On examination, patient was alert, conscious, cooperative, and oriented to time place person. He has decubitus of choice. Pulse rate was 84 per minute regular. So essentially normal. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. On general survey, general survey was normal. So moving mm -hmm. towards uh, inspectory findings. There is a ulcerative proliferative growth underneath the prepuce over the dorsal part of glans penis with irregular shape, inverted margin, and uneven surfaces. Base of ulcer was covered with unhealthy necrotic tissue. However, the whole of uh, ulcer was not uh, visible because it was uh, covered with, it was at the, the mass was almost involved uh, prepuce. Urethral matus appeared normal and other part of external genitalia appeared normal. Hmm. Uh, on inspection base as an inspectory finding or a palpatory finding? Yeah, I'm just uh, trying to mention. What are looking at necrotic tissue? This is, what that are is looking at what? Floor. That is a floor. The floor of Ulcer yeah. has a floor and a base. Floor is what you see, base is what you palpate. And once you start the local examination, you specify 
that you are doing examination of genitalia and the groin. Okay, that is a that is a part of your local examination. Suddenly you said on inspection, what area you are inspecting? So here your area of interest is local genitalia examination. and the groin examination. External genitalia. Sir, uh, on palpation of genitalia, growth is non-tender and temperature of adjacent area is normal. Growth has involved mm -hmm. the prepuce, so the exact size could not be assessed. It is extending from the urethral, almost urethral meatus distally to the distal part of proximal, uh, distal part of shaft proximally. It was almost covered the involved the whole of glans penis. Base of mm -hmm. ulcer is was uh, base of ulcer is indurated. Rest of penis, scrotum, and other part of perineum appeared normal. Bilateral superficial inguinal lymph nodes are palpable, mobile, and form inconsistent. On distal rectal mm -hmm. examination, prostate appears normal. And no abnormality detected on systemic examination. Did you mention the margin? Sir, on the, on it. Margin was irregular. So Whatever you can see, you said you seen it. You said you cannot see the whole ulcer. Uh, yes, sir. So the area you can see. Comment on that part, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Edge or margin? Did Visi you, did the you visible. Say? The visible part of uh, growth was uh, the mar margin of visible part of growth was irregular. What about margins the edge? edges were, edge? were inverted. Have you mentioned that? Let's go back to inspection. Uh, in in inspect, inspection, I have mentioned, sir. Where? Oh, inverted, so, okay. Irregular shape, inverted margin, and un uneven. Inverted, okay, okay. Inverted, fine. Next. Uh, moving to a summary, there is a single ulcer pro proliferative growth over the dorsal aspect of glans penis involving the overlying prepuce, standing proximally from this part of shaft to urethral meatus distally. It has a regular shape, averted margin, uneven surface with overlying necrotic tissue and indurated base. Exact site could not be assessed as previous was not fully mobile. There is palpable, mobile, bilateral, superficial inguinal lymph nodes. There was no sign of active inflammation. The rest of penis, scrotum and perineum appeared normal. Mm. Well, well, what is it? You mentioned tuberculosis as a possible differential diagnosis in your, uh, in your list on the end of uh, summary. So, what does a tubercular ulcer edge look like? Sir, uh, tubercular ulcer will be un undermined. Uh, sir, it will be undermined. Margin will not be averted, sir. Margins will be undermined. Okay. What about uh, other type and of charts be... which, uh, which can occur in the skin? On the or skin or on the glands also it can occur. It's not uh, impossible. All that is very rare. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, verrucous and bacilloid tumors. Those are histological types. Can you get basal cell carcinoma? Basal cell carcinoma. Very rarely. Very rarely. So what exactly. is a basal cell? Just for discussion purposes. How is the age of a basal cell carcinoma? Sir, uh, basal Not cell necessarily carcinoma. necessarily of the penis. Of the skin anyway. Yes, sir. It is also called rodental, sir. No, no. no, 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 no. How is the age line? Age, age of age. the ulcer. Age. 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 In a SCC, it is an inverted marker. Yes, sir. In a basal cell carcinoma, how does the age look like? Sir, okay. uh, it, it is round not rolled up. Rolled up. Rolled up. Edge. Rolled, rolled up. Not rolled. averted. Rolled up. Hmm. Yes. Okay. And so, second thing you mentioned, uh, Dr. Ghosh, he mentioned that uh, initially you said the secondary phimosis. He cannot detect the skin. So a gland spin is growth involving prepuce is not very common. Try to understand. Secondary phimosis is one situation. And gland spin is growth is infiltrated with the pupil skin is different. So if the patient is not here. It should be very clear. If you cannot detect the skin, it's difficult to comment. But a growth in the glans penis is unlikely to involve the pupicial skin. Already. It can be secondary phimosis. Secondary phimosis does not mean the pupicial skin is infiltrated. Secondary phimosis may be one of the causes of the cancer rather than yeah. Although in this case, you mentioned that initially the ulcer appeared and later he could not. Do. Maybe yeah. he kept on having chronic attacks of balanoprostitis and that led to fibrosis. And that led to inability to retract the pupils. So that is also a possibility. Uh, recurrent infections of the pupils and the foreskin are one of the predisposing causes of penile cancers. Okay, so, so what is your, at the end of history and examination, what is your provisional diagnosis? Sir, uh, my provisional diagnosis is a case of non healing ulcer of glans penis, likely carcinoma penis with uh, inguinal lymph node metastasis. You said bilateral oh, okay. uh, swelling. So it should be? So bilateral inguinal lymph node metastasis. Okay. So the, I suppose you would keep the same list of differential diagnosis or do you have anything new to add in the differential? Uh, same. 
more or less the same so how will you prove your diagnosis what is what is the next Sir, first i'll i'll go for uh, incision biopsy from the lesion and mm-hmm. i'll do sir some radiological investigations under local anesthesia under yes. general anesthesia under no anesthesia sir sir it will be done under sir penile block from the lesion over the glands i'll take an incision biopsy after proper okay. anesthesia and dressing treatment Wait, where, where, where from? Sir, from I'll take biopsy from the junction of Why? tumor tissue and Why? because sir uh, the growth the tumor grows and uh, uh, histologically we will find the tumor tissue more and we'll be able to delineate proper. One line answer. The most proliferating part of the part growth is that part part. the center or at the edge? So at the, the edge. center is. So where will you clearly see the features of malignancy? Yes, sir. O- over the edges. So that is why you will take it on the edge. Yes, sir. So, so suppose you do a, do a, take an ulcer. What is the histology that you are expecting? Sir, uh, most common take is the squamous cell carcinoma. Most probably, you say. What was the incidence of uh, squamous cell carcinomas in all penile cancers? Like what percentage of penile cancers are squamous carcinomas? Exactly. I cannot remember. Almost more than 90%. 95%. More than 95% of okay. penile cancers are squamous. Overwhelming majority. But it is not 100%. So can you get adenocarcinomas? Adenocarcinomas are rare, sir. But we can How get... will you get it? The epithelium is squamous. Epithelium squamous, stratified squamous. So how do you get adeno? Sir, uh... is, there a, is there a gland in the... Uh, yes, sir. There, there is a gland over the corona gland, is, sir, which secretes... Okay. Uh, what gland? Uh, sir, sebaceous gland. They they are have a name? Do they sir? have a name? Yes, Do they sir. have a name. Megma. They, they secrete smegma, sir. They are present over the corona gland. Tyson's gland. Tyson's gland. Oh, yes. Okay, fine. So, therefore, these glands can occasionally give rise to adenocarcinoma, but it is very, very rare. Less than 5%. You can get melanomas rarely. And you can get basaloid carcinomas. All of this you can get. But overwhelming majority is squamous carcinoma. So, you have. Da- anything else you're looking for in uh, addition to the diagnosis of squamous carcinoma? Would you like your pathologist to give you some other information? Can that is also now taken into account for staging. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For staging, uh, I'll look for the finding that whether the tumor has uh, perineural involvement or lymphovascular invasion. So it will help me to in in before stage. that. Great. Pathology should also give that. The great. Is the more, more important. Sometimes in that small specimen. It may not be possible for the pathologist to comment on LV or PNI, perineural, perineural infection. Because for that, they need to examine many large sections to exclude whether or not there is anything on it. But <coughs> the grade is something which the pathologist may be able to mention in, in a generous incision biopsy. And that will be very important for you for decision making. Okay. Yes, sir. So suppose uh, the biopsy has come and you are saying it is extending to the Shaft, the distal part of the shaft, at least on clinical examination, yes, you're also sir. saying it is it is a little difficult to comment on the exact extent of the, extent, the proximal yes, extent because of the uh, inability to retract inability the, to retract the of so, so what what do you want to do to exactly delineate how how much it has gone? What help will you take? Sir, uh, some investigations like I'll go for ultrasonography of penis to exactly okay. see the. Okay, fine. So that and, will tell you. Yes, sir, and uh, see is. CCT of whole abdomen, including pelvis. No, that in is for cases, uh, distance sir. spreads. What about the local invasion? Sir, for local invasion, based uh, investigation will be, sir, uh, injection of prostaglandin and uh, go for MRI. Sir, for the okay. t- t- tissue in exact involvement, it will be clearly. So, that the contrast enhanced MRI would be MRI. the most accurate for local staging. You're yes. correct. Okay, fine. So, the uh, how will it, uh, what is the local staging? Sir, uh, locally, uh, exactly, sir, TNM staging, I cannot comment on because I don't have a biopsy report. Because, yeah, just sir, theoretically, theoretically, part, theoretically yeah. sir, uh, it will be involvement uh, of How does it start? TIS? Sir, TIS, TA, T1, TIS, TA, T1, T2. Sir, it will be T3 because of involvement of the cab. I expect involvement of cavernous. Corpora, corpora cavernosa. Corpora cavernosa. Yes, if corpora cavernosa is involved, it will be T3. What is yes. T2? Sir, T2 is involvement of cor- cor- corpora spongiosa. Okay. 
What is P4? T4 is involvement of adjacent structures. Uh, what are the structures? Sir, perineum or pe pelvic. Sir, perineum, scrotum, sir, scrotum, 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 prostate, perineum, rectum. Rectum is a little far away, but yes, okay. Fine. So that is the T stage. So, so suppose you've got an MRI, you're working in a good center, you've got a contrast MRI done and that says that a pro the distant part of the corpus spongiosum is involved. So now it is T3 and it is N2 clinically, bilateral, yes. inner yes. nodes, you said? Bilateral, bilateral. So what now? So what now? Sir, so now I'll so do some uh, investigations to look for distant mids, or, uh, okay. although there is what? no history. Sir, so we'll go what? for chest X-ray and USD whole abdomen at least. USG whole abdomen. You've already got pelvic lymph nodes, uh, inguinal lymph nodes, palpable. Will the ultrasound be more? See, accurate? USG is always an investigation. USG is extension of clinical examination. But if you say I do staging, hmm. staging needs the next investigation. USG is an extension of clinical examination. You can also just say I do USG. But what about the delineation of the other lymph nodes? Sir, uh, CCT, CCT pelvis will yes. be. Yes, sir. Abdomen and pelvic. Yes. Abdomen, yes, CT. CT scan abdomen. Where there are nodes that are positive, bilateral inguinal nodes are positive, you will need a CCT scan CCT. to define whether pelvic nodes are positive or not, whether further there are any retroperitoneal nodes or not, or whether there is a... And of course, you will do a chest x-ray. What yes. are the common sites of metastasis from penile cancer? Sir, commonest uh, sites? the commonest site is the superficial inguinal lymph nodes, and then it... No, no, there are distant metastasis. Lymph I'm talking nodes. about distant metastasis. Distant metastasis. Distant metastasis. How common is uh, so, so, uh, rare, rare, yeah. distant metastasis? Yes, is rare. agreed, rare. But if, yes, if they do happen, where do they happen? Most common, they are very rare. I agree. Sir, uh, lungs, lung, lung, liver, bone. Lungs, lungs liver, bone. Lungs, lungs, liver, lungs, okay, so most commonly lungs, lungs, liver, bone. Okay, so the chest X-ray and a CT scan of the abdomen will be more than enough. Abdomen and pelvis. So suppose the CT scan does not show any pelvic lymphadenopathy, significant. What next? The You've next. got the MRI, which is showing distal shaft involvement. You've got the CT scan of the abdomen, which is not showing any pelvic nodes, any liver mates, and the chest X ray is also normal. What next? Sir, uh, next I'll plan the treatment. So, what is the treatment? The treatment is, uh, sir, a partial or total. Um, this is a patient. You cannot offer him yes, both. Yes, both. Uh, yes. Sir, sir uh, in, in this case, uh, I'll go for partial penectomy because. Sir, so, what are the what are the considerations that you see when you decide on partial penectomy? Sir, for partial penectomy, uh, I should have be remain two centimeter remaining stump after okay. taking two centimeter margin from the uh, tumor. Do you need two centimeter margin nowadays. Nowadays sir, it is not two centimeter. No, sir. Tra traditionally, it was said two centimeter. Nowadays, we can hmm. take one centimeter margin. One. Uh, if it's well two, one point five. Go to five millimeter. If it's a well differentiated tumor, you can go up to 5 to. Converse, okay, if it is a T3, T3, and a G3, grade 3, you might even consider 1.5 centimeter, but 2 centimeters are generally not required. Now, suppose this man is uh, a very high profile person. He is uh, most unwilling to have a partial amputation. He wants to have more conservation. He is a slightly younger man. He wants to have more conservation of the penis. Is there any option that you can yes, give him? Yes, sir. Uh, we can offer him. If he is, he is not willing to go for surgery, I'll uh, go for radiotherapy. Yes. For and, a large infant ulcer, and, 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 and lesion, adjuvant chemotherapy will not be. Adjuvant yes, chemotherapy will not. Also not adjuvant, new adjuvant, you mean to say? Yes, sir. New adjuvant chemotherapy. No, I was talking about surgical options. Are there any other more conservative surgical options that you can try? Where it's you need almost like so uh, Suppose you're in the uh, it's well describing the face. What is the surgery that you hmm. keep on excising and see that there is no uh, growth in the cut margin? Mo sir, molds microscopy. Yes. Mo Correct. So you should be aware of it. I don't think anyone is doing it in Kolkata, but at least as a postgrad, you should be aware of it. So what is done is the growth with a very minimal margin, say two, three, four millimeter margin is taken off. And that margin is shaved off. And this is done obviously under microscopic vision. So you can see the details very well. And it is oriented and it is sent to the pathologist for frozen section immediately. And the pathologist will examine it in detail while the patient is still under anesthesia. 
and comment about the margin if the pathologist finds that in some areas the margin is very close that particular area further say 2 mm revision will be done another shave will be taken and again that will be sent for pathology and it has been shown that it is reasonably safe and there is good local control almost uh, the five year local control and penile preservation rate is is it you know 80% with a well performed and in good selected patients okay so well so it is just a distal shave which is involved if it is not very high grade it is well differentiated you can consider mohs micrographic surgery also in that case you may not even need 1 cm margin you can get away with less than that so more penile shaft can be preserved and yet you can be sure that you have got negative margins with the help of intraoperative frozen section frozen section yes okay so we let us discuss uh, some amount of uh, actually let us finish the uh, treatment first so that is a partial penectomy and you will definitely aim for 2 cm residual Stop. Well, what about uh, the inguinal nodes? What do you do for the inguinal nodes? Sir, uh, inguinal lymph nodes. So I'll go for uh, USC guided definition. What 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 do you, when you say it's a clinically significant node? There is a term called clinically significant node. You have nodes in the groin. A lot of people are barefooted. People has some nodes being pulled in the groin. When you say this is a clinically significant node. Sir, <coughs> this. Your okay. examination shows some findings. And yes, sir, it is palpable. It's okay, palpable. so palpable. So already, sir, I said that, in, especially in barefooted people who work in the fields and all, it is not uncommon to find palpable nodes in the groin region, especially. So, what in addition to just a node being palpable will make you suspicious that this is a, this could be a metastatic node, or a significant. Any node. any size criteria, consistency, than fixity. So consistency will be firm, and there will yes. just loss of uh, there will be uh, by firm. Say hard, firm to hard. Firm to hard. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, and in the groin, a size more than one centimeter is taken as clinically significant. In the groin, other areas it is seven millimeter or five millimeter, but in the groin it is about one centimeter. Is a firm to hard and, consistency. And the third criteria is if they are yeah. matted, matted, yes, matted and fixed. So either size. Or the consistency hard or matted. So even if it is less than one centimeter, but it is stony hard, or there are two nodes which are matted and or fixed, there is restricted mobility. Even if they are not one centimeter in size, you will take that to be significant. And obviously, if they are larger in size, even if they are firm or soft, you will consider them to be significant. Yes. Sir. So any of these three criteria would make you say that this node, which I can feel in the groin, is a significant node and not just a reactive node. So you've got such a note, and you've asked for a USG guided definition. So yes. the definition comes out to be positive. What positive. next? Yes, sir. I'll in I'll go for inguinal lymph bilateral inguinal lymph nodal dissection. Okay. Suppose there is a, a node positive only on one side, not on the other side. What type of? Uh, if there is a positive node on one side, what should be the extent of dissection? Is it should it be unilateral or should it be bilateral and when do you consider pelvic node dissection also there are uh, situations that yes, sir, uh, uh, positive groin node may dictate you to do a pelvic node dissection also just first because the coach has asked yes, what is the extent of dissection when you have a unilateral sir uh, if unilateral lymph node is positive so i'll go for sir uh, Still, you have to do a uh, inguinal node dissection. dissection what do you mean? But no, just what do you mean by inguinal node dissection? What lymph nodes you are dissecting from where to where? Sir, uh, I'll give in season or it is given. Nee, what are you removing? Sir, I am removing the superficial inguinal lymph nodes. Only. Only. No, sir. Superficial no. inguinal lymph nodes and deep in inguinal nodes. Nee. Nee. Superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes. So why did you say superficial? You will have to remove both superficial and deep inguinal lymph nodes. What about yes, the pelvic sir. lymph nodes? Sir, pelvic for pelvic lymph node, uh, sir, initially, uh, uh, I'll go. There are some criteria. When the groin nodes are positive, there are some criteria which will dictate you to do pelvic node dissection. Not in all cases. Where? Exactly. I, uh, yeah. I don't know. But uh, it's, it's uh, more than two nodes being positive. If there is external extension. Extension. So okay. these are the indications taken for doing pelvic lymph node dissection. Also, so do you address the other side, yes. other inguinal? 
Yes, sir. Other side, other side also. Other side, I'll go for superficial and I'll send for frozen section if available. And if it comes out okay. to be negative, uh, negative, I'll not do further dissection. If it okay. comes, suppose, suppose suppose the patient underwent just a partial penectomy. It yes. was a very small growth, and partial penectomy was done. At that time, the groin nodes were negative, and the patient is on follow up. And one year later, he is now presenting with unilateral groin node. What will you do? Sir, I'll go Both for side or one side. No, no, positive node. If an has been done, it's a positive node on the right side. This time also, if there was a right-sided node, and one year later in another patient, there is a right-sided node. What will you do? Unilateral or bilateral? I'll still go for bilateral, sir. No. If it is presenting in a delayed stage, metaclonus presentation, you would be justified in doing unilateral if the opposite side is normal, both on examination and imaging, because you have already given the disease time to present, but it is not presenting. And the primary is out now. So whatever is presenting now, it was already there at that point of time, isn't it? You have done the partial penectomy one year ago. So now the cancer is not coming from the pathology lab. If there is cancer in the node now, that was already there at the time of disease. Yes. We did not detect it. It was occurred. But the opposite side has not presented in this one year. So you can assume it, there it, is no guarantee. No, no, two, three months, right? But you can assume one that maybe the other side is negative. But on a synchronous presentation, when there is a primary growth and the patient is presenting with unilateral lymph nodes, then there is a very high chance that the opposite side is also affected because there is extensive cross inner cross drainage of uh, crossover of the lymphatics near the base of the penis. So, for a primary presentation, even if it is a unilateral lymphadenopathy, you address both groins. But if it is a metachronous presentation, especially if the time gap is fairly large, more than six months. In yes. that case, if it is a unilateral presentation, you can be justified in doing just the unilateral treatment and keeping the other groin under observation. Okay. Yes, sir. So that is the difference in treatment. And Pelvic, you have already said more than two nodes positive or the presence or of the external, external node in of the inguinal node will mandate a pelvic lymph node. Why not do a pelvic lymph node in all cases? Sir, what because it will cause more, co more comorbidity to the patient. Uh, okay, it will cause more comorbidity. What are the morbidities? So not comorbidities, morbidities. Mor morbidities as opposed to morbidities. What are the morbidities of groin node dissection? Sir, it might lead to infection and edema of, limb, of lower limbs. Uh, not might. In edema of lower limb is bound to happen. That is, you must tell every patient that you will have slight swelling, especially if you're doing on one side. Your This leg will be more swollen than the other side. If it is bilateral, you have to tell him that both your legs will be swollen. He has to live with that. What else? If you have done a good lymphadenectomy, patient will have lymphedema. Um, what about the more acute problems? There is a lot of edge necrosis of the flap, skin flap. So there is wound breakdown, there can be seroma, there can be infection, there can be lymphoria, prolonged lymphoria for weeks, three weeks, one month there is a lymphatic drainage and so the patient has to carry it, go around with a drain. So in a patient who is say a high profile patient who is an executive in a private firm, he will not be happy to yes. be forced to take rest for so much, uh, such a long time. Uh, his job may be threatened. There are many problems. So you don't take that decision lightly. And the long-term th thing I already said. Okay, what about, uh, what are the, uh, so if it is the N2, nowadays, if it is the gross uh, nodes, uh, do you directly go for surgery? Sir, uh, adjunct chemotherapy can be offered. Adjuvant, Neva, but new adjuvant. New adjuvant, sorry, sorry, new, new adjuvant. New adjuvant. When, when, do you oh, now, uh, when do you particularly consider that patient should get the benefit of new adjuvant therapy? I don't know. If you have a fixed node, if you have N2 disease, N3 disease. N2, N3 and fixed node. So that NCC nowadays guideline recommend that you should give new adjuvant chemotherapy and then take the patient up for surgery. Okay. Suppose there is more extensive involvement of the shaft, then what will you do? Sir, uh, it, uh, it will require total penectomy. Total penetration. After say, taking one centimeter margin, if you find that the residual stump is not two centimeters, not less, then, not, it then is less patient, than two centimeters, then... then the patient cannot stand upright and make it. So the patient will only soil his clothes. So in that case, it is better to form a perineal stoma so that at least patient can sit down and pass normally, pass here. Okay. 
So what if the scrotum is also involved? It has gone up to the base of the penis and has involved the scrotum. So then, sir, radical penectomy will then radical penectomy and. Any kind of scrotectomy, scrotectomy, yes. orchidectomy, everything else. So total emasculation, total amputation of penis with bilateral orchidectomy. With bilateral orchidectomy and the scrotectomy. To get clean margins. Okay. Yes. Fine. So, uh, sir, any other question? Otherwise, we go on to the operative. Yeah. Uh, uh, if, uh, suppose we have a uh, N zero node in the groin. There is no node palpable, and uh, you feel that uh, ultrasound also has not shown any uh, node. I agree. Yes. What, what is the setting? What is the recommendation? How sir, do you sir. treat patient having N zero node? Sir, uh, I'll go for penectomy and then I'll give the patient uh, antibiotic therapy. No, no, no. no, there is no node. No sir, node palpable. Sir, I, I'll go for sentinel limb. No, no, no. That again should be guided by the primary lesion. In, the primary In lesion every case, so TIS, suppose I say the TIS. Then T one even it is not. So the chance of getting limb node is less. But it's a high grade tumor. It's a grade three tumor. Patient has got T3 lesion. Uh, in that case, the chance of luminosity is higher. So if you have a situation that luminosity is higher chance, then you are not getting palpable, yeah, but still with metastasis. Then what is the strategy? Sir, go for. I'll go for. In such cases, sentinel lymph node biopsy will be. How will you do, sir? How will you do sentinel biopsy in biopsy. penile carcinoma? Sir, uh, for sentinel lymph node biopsy, uh, radioactive dye or uh, ice. Which which is it? Technetium 99 colloid. Technetium 99 labeled what? What is the actual agent used? So, sulfur colloid. Sir, sulfur, sulfur, sulfur colloid. colloid. Okay, it is injected. Where do you inject sir, it? It's sir, around the lesion. Yes, peritumorally, you inject it the yes, evening sir. before. Yes. Okay, sir. then. And then uh, lymph node, after one hour, lymph node dissection will be done. No, not dissection. Yes, sir, you have to localize. localize. There will yeah. localize, with, localize? Uh, radio, radio, uh, with gamma camera and then where there will be maximum radioactivity will give in season and uh, it's not gamma camera. When you use you say gamma probe. Gamma probe. Hand gamma held camera gamma you probe. take a scanning picture. Here you use a gamma probe to find the what, what do you take as a significant hotspot? Ten. Ten. Yes. The uptake percentage. More than 10 times the background score. If it is more than 10 times the background score, that area is a hot spot, significant hot spot. So you localize on that area and try to identify the node and you send it for frozen section. Okay. If it is positive, then you'll have to go for uh, lymph nodal dissection. What? So we shall have uh, both, both groups. Sir, I'll go for both groups. If it is a high grade tumor, sir, so we are going for sentinel biopsy. So we'll go for both. So we'll do a formal okay. lingual section. You need not go to the pelvis because it's a uh, N0 clinically and you have just raised a node on uh, sentinel biopsy. So yes, it might need to do a pelvic section. So what are the etiological factors uh, responsible for development of carcinoma penis quickly? Sir, there are some risk factors like uh, mm. smoking, smegma, mm. poor hygiene, mm. chronic uh, balanus, balan, balan chronic balanitis, balanophosphatitis, or mm -hmm. long-standing genital warts. It's, mm -hmm. HPV infection is also a causative. Mm -hmm. Which sir types? Sir, uh, 16. 16 and? 18. 18. 18. And 31. Okay, 18. 16 and 18 most commonly. Okay, fine. Then how does HPV work? How does HPV cause penile cancer? Any idea? Sir, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, what does this bias causes? Uh, in the cell, sir, it will lead to suppression of p53 gene. Okay, actually, it does that. How does it do it? How do, how does p53 get suppressed? Sir, exactly, I, I cannot. The remember. H, the viral genome gets integrated into the host the, DNA, so it has got the fragments of the viral genome. What kind of virus is HPV? DNA or RNA? Sir, papillomavirus, happy or DNA virus. Sir. Yes, they are double stranded DNA virus. So they have E6 and a E7 genes which get incorporated into the host genome. And they act, they suppress the P53 expression and thereby they cause cell immortality. They cause more proliferation and they cause the cells not to die. So the apoptotic pathways are interrupted. So that is how HPV virus causes oncogenesis. Okay. Yes, so. So how about vaccines? Will that help? 
suppose you had a lot of money and you gave vaccines to every young man would that help in the prevention of sir uh, exactly like the role of cancer yes yes it is there there, there is a role for preventing genital malignancy by using hiv vaccine that is also appear for cancer of penis also so for cervical cancer it is well known yeah. so why is it well known for cervical cancer and not so well known for penile cancer because more than 95% of cervical cancers are hpv related but penile cancer not 95% only around 50% of them are hpv related other but there is a recommendation you can use for high risk patients what about if we vaccinate all the females sir what sorry sir if we vaccinate all the females will the males get benefit Yes, sir. Definitely, because the re- infection risk will be yes, less. Yes, it's sexually transmitted. So we can enjoy the benefit by vaccinating females also. If all the females are cured of HPV, so the males will not get HPV, isn't it? Less so, infection. Yeah, but the non-HPV mediated pathway of penile cancer will still be there. So you will not be hundred percent protected, but you will be protected from HPV. Okay. So the, what are what are the other causes? There are few more other few more causes. What about HIV infection? HIV. Yes, sir. HIV infection will same or higher incidence? Because high. Higher incidence. Sir. Yes, sir. Immune suppression leads to more chances of development of penile cancers. Okay. Circumcision at birth protects. Circumcision at birth so is protective. So religious circumcision, which is carried out in neonates or in birth before it is protective, has got sir. a very good, strong protective effect. Yes, sir. Okay. What about the pre-malignant lesions? What are pre-malignant lesions? The pre-malignant okay, lesions are, uh, sir. Uh, leukoplakia uh, yes. erythroplasia and uh, sir erythroplasia of querat q u e y r a t querat querat erythroplasia uh, of querat what about bowen's disease bowen's disease is a very good reason what is between bowen's disease and uh, erythroplasia of querat sir bowen's disease is uh, actually tumor sir uh, carcinoma in situ and it is usually so, present over the sac is not carcinoma in situ both sir but so erythro- uh, when it affects the prepuce it is erythroplasia of cuerat when it, it affects it, the shaft of the penis it is called balance it is the same disease another predisposing factor Spoon, you have to sir, mention that long long standing warts you have mentioned that already the very okay. first that was bosque lonsdale's tumor bosque lonsdale's tumor is a verrucous carcinoma yes sir bosque lonsdale's tumor is aggressive verrucous carcinoma that's not a pre malignant what about bxo BXO, you have to mention that. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. so what uh, total amputation of penis position sir, position sir uh, first uh, i'll take consent from the patient i'll explain the procedure and Arre, then... forget about consent you talk about uh, position sir uh, lithotomy position lithotomy fine then uh, anesthesia then anesthesia it is done under uh, spinal anesthesia okay and uh, after uh, antiseptic dressing dripping mm. i'll incision will be made uh, penis racket incision is made around the base of penis in uh, mm. and uh, extending up to the scrot midline of the scrot in the middle of the scrotum okay and, fine then so, and then uh, i'll dip in, i'll dip in the incision and mm. what factors come now once you so start skin, giving incision so what skin subcutaneous tissue will come then mm. some then structure will come then need to be tackled before you go deeper Once sir. in the skin and subcutaneous tissue, yes, sir. few things will come on the dorsum of the penis. What? Dorsal fascia. Yes, sir. Dart. This is fascia containing its vessels and what nerves. What vessel? What, sir? Uh, dorsal. Sir, in superficially, there will be dorsal pain. Superficial so dorsal pain. Superficial dorsal pain, and then mm-hmm. deeper to it, deep dorsal pain, uh, dorsal artery, and the dorsal nerve. Okay. Then. And there is no specific dorsal nerve coming along with the vessel. It's a nerve plexus which comes to the penis. Okay, it's not a, 
definite uh, structure coming in dorsal nerve. Yes, sir. After okay. that, uh, sir. Uh, then what ligament comes from sir, the? Yes, sir. Uh, the two ligaments are there. Super. Uh, there is one fund. Fund. One suspensory ligament which is deeper hmm. and the fundiform ligament. Where is the sir? Where is the suspensory ligament attached? Sir, it is attached to the pubic pubic from the pubis to the base uh, to the brain base of the base. So, yes. so you have to first clear the shaft up shaft to the from the, near the two So up to the so you till you feel the pubic bone. You have to keep yes. going deeper till you feel the pubic symphysis. Yes, and sir. once you have reached there, from the pubic symphysis, the attachment of the, you will see the penis is densely adhered there by that fibrous structure, which is the suspensory ligament of the penis. So that you have to divide sharply, either using a cautery or with a knife, whatever. Yes, sir. After so that, uh, some amount of bleeding. Sir. So once you free that, you will get an additional length. And then you can see, what will you see now? Sir, you are just seeing a shaft. Yes. So now you are seeing a shaft. Now, once you have divided the suspensory ligament and got to the base, what will you see? Sir, I'll see the sh shaft with uh, two cavernous. No, no, exactly, two they were diverging. They will be yes, diverging now. So yeah. now you will see the divergence, the slight broadening of the base because yes, the sir. two crude are going on each side and getting attached to the. So crude is attached. Two crude are getting attached to the Ishwiram, and this is covered by what? The crude at the base is covered by something on either sir, side. Uh, sir. Um, Muscle is your is your is muscle, muscle. Hmm. and on the under surface there is you will see on the under surface you will see what dilated part of the well, dilated muscle. part of uh, the urethra that? called navicular fossa no oh, you will not see urethra how can you see the urethra you will see the corpus this is the dilated part of the corpus on you some known it's as the bulb that is not the bulb of bulb of the bulb penis. penis bulb of the penis okay so now what will you do Sir, uh, I'll separate this corpus spongiosum, uh, corpus cavernosus, and we'll. Uh... Ah, you separate the corpus cavernosus first. Before that, you have to do something else. The patient can do without the corpus cavernosus, but the patient cannot do without. Sir, urethra. Yes, urethra. He still needs urethra. the urethra. Some part of the. We urethra. have reached so the base something. of the penis. You now dissect the corpus spongiosum from the I mean, in the bulb from the, the penis corpora. from the corpora cavernosa. Yeah. Yes, so, so, so you have okay. to incise that unica albuginea there. That unica albuginea is investing all the three layers. So you have to take off the corpus spongiosum from the corpora, right up to the bulb of the penis, and then you have to transect it. You have to transect it, keeping at least five centimeter length of the. Urethra. If you have already put in a catheter, at that point of time, you have to withdraw the catheter out. Okay. And then you reinsert a catheter into it. That you is have to the, the segment of corpus is projecting out so yes, that you so can create a perineal perineal new urethrostomy, huh? new meters in the perineum. So at least five centimeters length from the bulb. Okay. Yes, sir. And now you are free. The distal part of the corpus is attached to the specimen and the Corpora cavernous are attached to the Fire, pubic, uh, pubic yes, yes, So now what do you do? And the corpus, the, the proximal corpus spongiosum is separated out. Proximal now, so now there, uh, I'll in... which vessel come into the corpus uh, corpora cavernous base on either side? Or cavernous is a deep, deep artery, deep artery, deep, of the of, uh, deep, deep, artery deep artery of the penis. Artery so, of the so before dividing it, you have to. Clamp uh, and uh, either ligate or cauterize the vessel, and then I'll see. Cauterizing is not so easy. They are very vascular. You know, entire corpora yeah. is uh, formed by cavernous spaces, blood vessels. So it will keep oozing. It will be very difficult to. Yeah, so it is better to ligate so, first ligate. and then divide. Yes, so how yes, will you ligate yes. it? It's absolutely adherent to the base. How will you do it? It is not easy. It is, uh, and it's a bit thick structure. It's not like a small blood vessel that you can dissect out and you can clamp, like no, you're you saying. To... Transfix it. Uh, yes, yeah. with the with... overrun. So you take a big needle, big needle, it's a 40 needle with eye, and you thread a vicryl through it. And then right to the center of the shaft, you pass it from as deep as possible, from superior to deep, and you take it out. And once you take it out, the so the try to understand this is the shaft, and through the center of the shaft, the vicryl has gone from top to bottom. And it is since you have threaded it on the eye, it is a two, two threads of vicryl. So the distal part where it is attached to the needle, you cut it. And so now you've got two vicryl threads. So one on each side, you tie it as proximally as possible, absolutely on the 
you big boy now now sort of uh, new energy sources can now take care of it oh, sir i have never <laughs> used energy sources for a peanut time so i will only use a commission oh, yes maybe if you have energy sources you can use it i'm sure that will work but i have never used it so i would still prefer that uh, when yeah. you are working in a small center or you are working over for ordinary people poor people they cannot afford 15 20000 yeah, for yeah. a liga sure probe or a harmonic probe so it is better one vehicle will cost 500 rupees why will you waste 15000 rupees for a hand piece when you can do it with 500 <laughs> rupees it is not difficult you just take a white and you ligate it firmly at the base and you just cut it off with a cautery distal to it so all you need is electro cautery and vehicle switcher you should be able to operate in a setup where there is no energy device also if you have energy device fantastic no problem you can divide with that so and after that the stumps may still be oozing a little they are so vascular there may still be some oozing so you may have to put in a few switches to overrun uh, to overrun the or cauterize it till you achieve hemostasis so there will be just a say few millimeters of remaining attached to the pubic bone the rest of the corpora cavernosa will be divided and the specimen is out now what do you do sir uh, so now i'll have to do urethral per- uh, perineal urethrostomy where so, will you do it where will you do it sir uh, in the perineum uh, midline between uh, scrotum and uh, anal anus in mid sir, the base of the scrotum and the anus yes mid point of the sir so what how will you do it sir uh, we have a circular opening in the end of the urethra yes will you do just this yes. or you have to do sir i'll do I'll do spat, sir. Spatulation. Yes, will, you have to spatulate so, it. Yes, sir. You then have to spatulate I'll... it in the midline. Yeah. So keep two lateral flaps, and you should also remove a disc of the skin in the perineum. So at least a five yes, millimeter diameter disc of skin has to be disc removed. Disc of skin and subcutaneous tissue. Happen? I'll have to remove, so and then, happen? sir. If you don't remove that, if you just make an incision, you pull it out. You can make a stab incision, put in an artery forceps, and sir, with the, the potency of urethra will not maintain, sir. And it so will what lead... is the term called? It will be mere stenosis. 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 Or stenosis will happen over a period of four months or six months. Patient will come back and say, "I cannot. I cannot pass Passes urine." urine. Yes. And you will see, it is a very difficult job at that time to refashion it, hmm. because yes. the urine targets are five rows and retracted. So for always that, make a general stoma. Make excise a wide excise a wide ellipse of skin and always patulate the urethra and. Make a white stone. Otherwise, they tend to get stenosed. Yes, after that I'll put a catheter and then. Yes, obviously you'll keep the catheter in for at least seven days. Yes, sir. Seven days. And I'll put a subcutaneous drain and we'll close the scrotum transversely. Instead of. Correct. So, so, so why will you close it transversely? Sir, to lift up the scrotum. Exactly. Uh, fine, fine, fine. See. So, sir, more or less, I think it has been covered here. Yeah. So, Complication of. complication the complication can be sir metoma formation infection and initially sir ischemic uh, complication to the urethra and later on it can develop a urethral stricture yeah 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 okay yeah sir i think more or less covered yes thank you thank you dr bhavi thank you okay sir.